uh, around the clock, cheap energy. On demand, anytime during the day. Doesn't have challenges of intermittency. It is a true 24 seven power generation resource. And that allows us to get 40 to 50% more power out of the system. Big tech has a big problem. Giants like Google and Meta are racing to build more and more data centers to power everything from your favorite apps to the booming world of AI. But all that power comes at a cost, and it's not just financial. These companies have made huge promises to go green, and right now the electricity grid can't keep up. So what's the solution? For two of the world's biggest tech players, the answer might just be buried deep in the earth itself. Geothermal energy isn't new. For decades, we've tapped into natural hotspots like those in Iceland to generate power. But these locations are rare. The real game changer is next generation geothermal. This technology uses advanced drilling techniques similar to those used in the oil and gas industry to reach deep into the earth where hot rocks are much more common. Water is pumped down into these hot zones, turns to steam, and then is brought back to the surface to spin turbines and generate electricity. It's a closed loop system that provides a constant 24 seven source of clean energy. And now tech companies are putting their money on it. In 2021, Google teamed up with a company called Fervo Energy. And in late 2023, their pilot plant in the Nevada desert went online. The project now feeds clean energy into the local grid that powers Google's data centers. Being able to produce 10 megawatts from a single production well is a milestone that dramatically improves the economics of geothermal and really opens the door to new possibilities. We're developing three times that amount of power in a third of the time. And that's really the value add of what Fervo is doing today. And it's operating like we said it would. 10 plus months of operating at history, 10 plus months of electrons on the grid. It's working, it's real, it's today. Also today, we're announcing that for the first time, we've closed $100 million of debt at the project Cape Phase 1 level. It's going to underpin our development here. When you look at Fervo's capital expenditure, we've now been able to reduce the gathering system costs down to 2%. I think what we're doing here is building a movement of a new emerging energy technology that's going to transform the world, and I think we can all do it together. Not to be outdone, Meta, the company behind Facebook, recently partnered with Sage Geosystems for a much larger project that could provide 150 megawatts of power. To give you an idea of that scale, one megawatt can power about 750 homes. We've got contracts with Meta. We've got three contracts with the U.S. Department of Defense. Since 2020, we've actually delivered quite a lot. We've built and are ready to store energy in our first commercial energy storage facility, which is located south of San Antonio. Doesn't have challenges of intermittency. It is a true 24 seven power generation resource. Just having a very reliable base load power also helps to stabilize the grid. The underpinning of our technology and why we're different is that everybody else besides us actually just considers the heat component of the enthalpy equation. We take both the heat and the pressure volume component, and that allows us to get 40 to 50% more power out of the system. We have patented our subsurface technologies in terms of gravity fracking, in terms of cyclic operation of the well. The need for a new power solution is urgent. The demand for electricity from data centers has exploded. A typical server rack that once needed just a few kilowatts of electricity now requires 40 kilowatts. And the facilities themselves are growing exponentially, with some consuming more than 100 megawatts. But the biggest power consumer on the horizon is artificial intelligence. Some studies suggest that by 2030, data centers could use over 9% of all electricity generated in the U.S., a massive jump from the 4% they consume today. This has created a huge mismatch between the time it takes to build a new data center and the time it takes to build the power grid to support it. In some places, like Dublin, new data center construction has been put on hold because the city simply can't provide the power. And in London, getting a new grid connection could take well over a decade. This is why companies are looking for clean, firm energy, 
a steady, uninterrupted source of low-carbon power that can be built on site or close to it and not rely on an already strained public grid. Geothermal isn't the only solution. Tech giants are exploring everything from solar and wind to hydroelectric power. But these sources can be unreliable because they depend on the weather. That means they need expensive backup generators or batteries. This is where geothermal shines. It has a small land footprint, it's resilient, and it provides power 24-7, making it an ideal partner for a data center. The potential is huge. Researchers estimate that if we drilled for geothermal energy at the same rate we currently drill for oil and gas, we could meet 77% of global energy demand by 2050. To help accelerate this process, Google has partnered with a nonprofit called Project Innerspace to create a global geothermal map. It's like a Google Maps for heat, helping developers find the best places to drill. The push for next-generation geothermal energy shows that big tech isn't just focused on what's in the cloud, they're looking to the ground for a solution to their biggest power challenges. The partnerships between companies like Google and Meta with geothermal innovators could pave the way for a new, greener era for data and technology. The Geothermal Exploration Opportunities Map, or GeoMap Beta, is being developed to provide essential data and analytics for assessing the development potential for next-generation geothermal systems worldwide. The GeoMap body of work consists of surface and subsurface modules and a techno-economic sensitivity tool, all of which work together to provide outputs to user inquiries about geothermal resources and development potential in specific geographies. The GeoMap Beta launch includes, as its first case study, the continent of Africa, with increasing layer availability as the user zooms in on the country of Nigeria and the metropolis of Lagos. This case study approach is intended to illustrate the power and impact of this integrated multi-layer tool. Altogether, GeoMap brings together in one platform more than 70 layers of surface and subsurface data relevant to the characterization and understanding of geothermal opportunities in particular geographies. The data inputs informing the surface and subsurface modules of GeoMap and the collation of that data are derived from the research and development portfolio of Project Space Phase 1. The GeoMap surface module assesses surface suitability within the broader context of demand, transmission capacity, risks, data availability, and potential obstacles like protected areas, and utilizes machine learning models to estimate demand at building level granularity and at country and continent scales. GeoMap is being developed with the goal of enabling broad and robust stakeholder engagement in global geothermal growth and development opportunities and fills a significant gap in assessing geothermal energy potential by focusing on both subsurface potential and surface suitability, as well as the opportunities geothermal offers not only for power production, but also for geothermal heating and cooling. Future iterations of GeoMap will increase both the number of data layers in already launched regions, as well as adding new regions of the world for exploration and analysis using GeoMap.